Hello friends and welcome to Hog TV. I am your host, Bushido. Black Desert Online has many paths for your characters to choose to go down. Today I'll be discussing one of the paths that I have chosen, horse breeding and horse taming. If you're a bit new to the game, this can be a somewhat complex subject, so stick around and I'll go over everything from obtaining your first horse to how to breed to get higher tier horses. Starting with the assumption that you didn't pre-order the game or buy the Explorer's Pack, we'll have to get your very first mount. You get your very first mount by completing the Black Spirit quest at level 10 that unlocks called All These Goblins and the subsequent chain that comes from it. Eventually, the Black Spirit will give you a quest to summon the Goblin King with a scroll, you kill him, and then your reward for that will be your donkey. The donkey in and of itself is relatively useless, the only thing it truly provides is a little bit of carrying space. You can actually run faster than the donkey, you can sprint faster than the donkey. There's really no benefit to the donkey, but what we're going to do is ride this little ass up until it gets to level 7. That'll give us the subsequent training skill of level 5. Training level 5 is the bare minimum that you'll need in order to catch your very first stallion or mare in the wild, and let's be honest, it'll probably be stallion because mares are about as rare as a funny, rare thing reference. You'll get nothing less than comedy gold here at Hog TV, folks. My hilarious self aside, now that you're training level 5, it's time to gear up. Go to a stable master in any town or city, Heidel or Vela is what I would recommend, and buy 15 to 20 rope. I would personally recommend 20 for your first horse to be safe, because trust me, you're gonna fail. A lot. And don't think that you won't, because that's what I thought and I had to go back for more rope. It's up to you if you want to add sugar cubes. Sugar cubes will decrease the chance of taming failed. Um, I used it on my first couple horses, but I haven't used it ever since. Personally, I would recommend that you do use it for your first few horses just to get your feet wet. If you do take my recommendation, we'll have to craft some sugar lumps. To make your future horsey this tasty treat, you're going to need 1 mineral water and 10 raw sugar. Make sure it's raw and not normal sugar, or you will be wasting money. The reason why I recommend you buy the rope in either Vela or in Heidel is because that you can also get all the ingredients that you need to make sugar lumps in these areas as well. Simply click on the NPC finder in the upper right hand side next to your mini map and click on cooking and go to the vendor. In order to make one sugar lump you're going to need 10 raw sugar and one mineral water. You should also Make sure, once again, that you're buying raw sugar and not regular sugar. After you have the required materials, simply press L, click on heating, and put the required ingredients in. It'll take a couple of seconds and then you'll get one lump of sugar. I would recommend, if your budget allows, to craft about 8 of these as you'll need 2 for every training attempt. Now it's time for one of the hardest parts about horse taming. And trust me, this can be quite a frustration if you're new to the game. Finding a wild horse. There are horse maps that you can find on Google, however many of them haven't served me very well and quite honestly because of all the different conflicting information between the Korean version and the Russian version and now the NA and EU versions, it's hard to find a map that can be truly accurate. So instead of providing you a link in the description below, I'm just going to show you myself. So the first spot that we'll be checking is just south of Vela, as shown here. The horse can spawn anywhere in the meadow, and you can actually find multiple horses here at any given time. From there, we'll want to head to Bandit Den's byway south of the Western Guard Camp, and follow the path that I'm showing here in the video. From Bandit Den's Highway, go ahead and head back to the road and go to Heidel. Be very careful when you exit Bandit Den's Highway because there are level 30-ish mobs that will one-shot you if you are too low of level, so be very careful to not run into any red dots on your minimap. Thank you. 
along the road to Heidel, you will be checking three more spots. The first spot is at the fork here in the road on the right hand side facing north. Directly to the right of this spot, there is a small farm with some homies looking inside scaring the cows. There is actually a horse that spawns inside the fence as well, and it is wild, so you can tame it. The last spot is very close to Heidel on the western point. You're going to want to go up the mountain pass that I'm showing here in the video. Once you get up to the top and you see the gravestone, you're in the right spot. Around this area, there are two more horses that can spawn. And yes, you can go up there and see two horses spawned if you're lucky. Trust me, this information is correct, but sometimes these spawns can be very sparse since the respawn rates are incredibly long. Some have theorized up to two hours, however, from personal experience, I would say that it is not quite that long. To help being conductive to your search, you can always try to hop onto a channel with the lowest density as possible, unless you're in peak time hours, in which case you'll just have to YOLO. Alright, now we have found a wild horse, we have some rope, and we have some sugar. I know what you're saying. What do I do? I'll tell you. First, we're going to want to use the rope, and be patient. If you get too close to the horse, it will run away, and the worst thing that you can do is try to catch the horse while it's running away. Wait until the horse is completely done being freaked out, and it goes back to normal patrolling patterns. Once that happens, get your rope out, get close to it, and you'll know that you're in range when you have your crosshair over the horse and you see a red crosshair on the horse's body. Now that you've lined up the shot, go ahead and smack that left mouse button to fire off the lasso. From here, you'll enter a minigame where you want to press W to walk forward towards the horse. When the horse whinnies and rears up on its hind legs, you're going to want to hit the space button and keep pressing the space bar until the horse calms down. There will be a timer as well next to the horse's bar. If you hit the space button for no reason at all, or too late, or too early, it will fail the tame, so wait until you see the winning. After your soon-to-be stallion is done flipping shit, go ahead and proceed to move forward again. You will repeat this event until you finally reach the horse. After you reach the horse, you'll see this interactive menu, and from here on out, the horse will no longer whinny, so you don't have to worry about that. If you have the sugar lumps, this is the time to feed it to them. You'll want to press F1 and just simply right-click the sugar lumps in your bag. If you don't have sugar lumps, your process will be slightly different. What you can't do is just jump on the horse. What you do want to do is wait at the horse with this menu up for about 30 to 45 seconds. The reason why is if you try to tame it too fast, the game will automatically fail the tame, and it'll say something to the effect of, try to tame too quickly. If you wait the proper 30 to 45 seconds, this error will not occur, and it will be much more likely for the tame to be a success. If you do fail the tame, don't freak out or anything, just simply re the horse and try again. If you do fail the tame, once again the horse will freak out a little bit and run around, so once again be patient and wait until the horse is done and stops moving before you try to re -lasso. When you're ready to go for that last step, just simply press R and if you hop up on the horse, your tame is successful. You'll know if the tame fails because the horse kicks you in the face. Now that you tamed your horse, it's time to do a happy little jaunt back to the stable master in the nearest closest city. Nearest closest. Yep. Click on the stable master and register your horse. Give it a name. It doesn't tell you what the gender of your horse is until after you name it, so just yellow. And if the gender is right, congratulations. And if not, you have a funny horse named Bob that's female. Yay. Quick little side note is that when you do your happy jaunt back to the stable master, you will notice that your horse is going slow. Don't freak out, you just simply can't go the full speed of your horse until after you register it. Now that we're totally an expert at catching horses, it's time to move on to greedy. The very first thing any professional tamer does is kiss your ass goodbye. And honestly, that's only slightly a joke, because realistically speaking, we're going to be catching a lot of horses, and we're going to need a lot of stable space. I would highly recommend that you pick up the extra stables available to you in Heidel. The correct house in Heidel that you want to purchase is 6-3.
Next, we're going to want to stock up on our gear again and walk our happy butts out into the wild to look for more horses. The objective is to find tier 2 horses in the wild. Now, this can be somewhat RNG, however, I can tell you for sure that there are ways to tell the differences between tier 1 and tier 2 horses in the wild. Tier 1 horses come in a variety of different colors, anywhere from white to brown, and... The muscle tone is very light, and the brown is going to be kind of milky for a tier 1 horse. The tier 2 horse, on the other hand, is going to have a very muscular and defined chest as well as legs, and the color is going to be a nice dark turd brown, like you've had nothing but protein for the last three days. If we're going to get serious about taming, we're going to have to keep catching wild tier 2 horses until we catch both a male and a female, and trust me, this can take some time. When you do finally get your male and your female, you take them and you mash them up together and they pop out a small baby horse, right? Uh, well, unfortunately, not quite yet. This is where the grind comes in. Everything else can be somewhat challenging, but this is just straight up grindy as hell. It's time to level up the horses. In order to get the best odds of getting a higher tier horse in the gender that you are looking for, I recommend using a horse breeding calculator. Luckily for you folks, it pays off to be my friend, and I have provided a very good horse breeding calculator in the description down below. One thing to keep in mind when you do use this horse breeding calculator is that females are extremely rare in the wild, so it's generally a pretty good idea to set up the calculator to give you the best possible chance of getting a female, even if it's not necessarily of the highest tier available. I'll admit this is a bit more of a personal preference, however, I stick by this rule ever since I got three tier four male horses with no competitive female to breed them with. After you get them to the desired level range, just slap the suckers up on the breeding market. What you're going to want to do is select one of the horses that you want to breed, click on breeding market, and go ahead and make sure that you put show me only. After it's posted, go to my registrations and you will see your horse there. Simply highlight the horse that you want to breed it with and hit apply. The breeding process takes a couple of hours, so you're going to have to be patient and do some other things while they're breeding. When you're done, you'll get your file from the breeding market, keeping in mind that it will be a full-grown horse, and once again, you don't know the gender, so good luck with the name. This is where the tricky part comes in, because unfortunately, you can't repeat this process. You can only breed horses a certain amount of time. For example, a female horse can only be bred once, and a male horse can only be bred twice. Once again, showing why female horses are so valuable. However, it is possible to get one more horse out of these parents, and all you have to do is sacrifice them to the gods. Once again, at the Stable Master, there is a button that you can press that is called Exchange. Exchange does have a one-day cooldown, so keep that in mind when you do it. But the gist of this is you give up two horses for another foul. It uses the exact same odds as breeding, so you double your chance of getting the necessary foul that you want while breeding. Your horses will not be back at any point in the game, so if you do choose to exchange them, which I do highly recommend you do as a horse breeder, just bear in mind that those horses will be gone forever. That pretty much wraps up the overall gist of breeding as well, so the only thing to really touch up on is how to actually level up your horse. Your horse gets experience by going distance, so you can't actually just run your horse into a wall or set it up to run around a circle, otherwise it will not get experience. However, Dom did listen to us horse breeders complain about how much of a nuisance it is to micromanage your horses, so what they did is add a feature called Auto Loop. All you have to do to set up a Auto Loop is go to the destination where you want to start, Alt right click to where you want to turn around and then alt right click on the icon of your horse where you currently are on the map again. What this will do is create a loop that your horse will run between endlessly until it gets stuck or you stop it manually. You'll know when you have done this correctly because your pathing line will go from blue to green. There are a couple things that you can do as well to increase the efficiency of this. The first one is buying a saddle which increases how fast your horse moves. 
The faster your horse moves, the faster it gains experience, and voila, logic. The second thing you can do is obtain the trainer's garb. While you can get this for free through the milestone task rewards, it comes so late into the rewards that I personally would recommend that if you really want it, to just buy it from the auction house or the marketplace, which is exactly what I did. One final tip for you, my friends, is that while horses cannot permanently die, they can die when their HP hits zero or they drown and they will receive something called a death token. Death tokens don't do anything except for negatively impact breeding, but the amount that it impacts breeding is quite a bit. So you're going to want to make sure that you keep your horse safe Anytime you get off your horse, you put them in a safe area, etc. Please note that horses are not very good swimmers, so if you put them in a body of water and your horse drowns, he will receive a death token, and this can happen off of autopathing if you're unlucky, which is what happened to me. So be very careful and pay attention if you're autopathing to a quest location or something of the sort, or your horse may end up in a body of water. Congratulations, my friends. You are now armed with the knowledge to claw your way up to the top with an empire of incestuous breeding. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below and I'll do my best to answer. If you have any video suggestions for the future, I'd be glad to hear them. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like more content like this in the future, please remember to subscribe and show the world your smiles. Goodbye.